This is Alex with Zeta Sky. In this how-to training video, we're going to show you how to use OneDrive on Mac OS. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to sync a folder from Teams to OneDrive. So here in Teams, I'm in this demo team general channel right now. And you can see that there's chat right here, but if I go to the files tab, you'll see that there's currently nothing here. So let's say there's already data here. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a Word doc called Word doc. And I'm not going to bother to put anything in it right now. So it's blank, but there's a file here. Now let's say I want to access this file, but I want to do it from Finder. Or if I was on Windows, that would be File Explorer, uh, which used to be known as Windows Explorer. Well, to do that, simply all I have to do while on the Files tab is click this Sync button. Now, before you do that, you're going to want OneDrive to already be set up. But if it's not, it should prompt you for signing in and all that. Just use your company account, it'll sign you in. So now that you saw that little window pop up, it's synced, and you may have caught it up here. It synced that file real quick. Since it's only one empty file, it didn't take very long. Now, if I wanted to access this, all I have to do is bring up Finder. I'm currently in my home directory. If you don't have the home directory here on the left, when you have a Finder window open, you can click on Go, and then click on Home. You could also use the key combination of shift command H, but it'll take you here. Since I was already there, it didn't do anything. But if I say in my downloads and I clicked home, it takes me there. Now there are three different folders on my computer that are related to OneDrive. This folder here is my personal OneDrive. So this is my Gmail account is tied to this and these are my personal files. They have nothing to do with the company. These are separate in a folder just called OneDrive. Then I have this folder called OneDrive dash company name, in my case, Zeta Sky LLC. And in this folder, it's my user files that are part of the company. So these are kind of like my personal documents in that I'm the only one that has access to them, but this is company data and stored on the company's OneDrive. And so if it's business stuff, I put it here because we have backup and, and all that. The last one here is the one that just says Zeta Sky LLC. And this is connected to all of the company data. And so this would be the team's file section or if you're using a, uh, a traditional Windows environment, if you have like a network drive with a P drive or an L drive or something like that, that will be contained in here. If we go in here, you'll see there's Demo Team 2 General, which I'm on the Demo Team 2 Team in the General Channel in the Files section. So if I go in here, you'll see I have a Word doc called Word doc that was just created a couple minutes ago. If I open it, I'll see that it's blank, just like I expected. This is from Word in Mac OS, not Teams. There, I'm just gonna type that in. I saved it. And then I'm closing. You'll notice that icon there for a second, which means it's syncing. Once it goes green, that means it's finished syncing. So if I go over here and hit the refresh button to make update the files that are here, you'll see that was modified a few seconds ago, even though I didn't touch this from within Teams. If I open it, you'll see that this is what I typed when I opened it from here. So this is the same exact file as this one. It's just two different ways of accessing it. Now, if, let's say this was a, an important document 
and I needed to have offline access to it. Say I was going to go on a trip and I was going to be on an airplane. I wasn't going to have access to the internet and I want to make sure I can work on this file. Well, at the moment, I'd be okay because there's a green check mark. That means that it is locally cached on my computer. But the fact that it is a, it's not a full green circle here means that this file can be taken off my computer by OneDrive to free up space if I don't use it for a while. And it handles that automatically. And it's, it's good to leave that on for most files. That way you don't run out of space and OneDrive can automatically free up space when it needs to. But for certain files, you may need to always have access to them. In that case, you can right click on it and choose Always Keep on this device. This will work for files and folders. Just be careful when you're doing, doing it on a folder because it will download everything in the folder. So you kind of want to avoid doing this on the big folders because it will take up a lot of space on your computer and might not even fit. So I'm going to go ahead and select Always Keep on this device. And what you'll notice once it refreshes here, it is now a solid green circle. Before, it was a green outline of a circle with a green check mark, and then the inside was black. And it just kind of reversed the interior of that. So now it's a solid green circle with a, a black check mark. And if you point at it, if you forget what it means, right there it's saying always available on this device. So it's telling me that. Let's say some time goes by and I no longer need to always have this on my computer. Let's say I'm running low on disk space or I just want to be a little bit more secure and I don't want it on my local computer anymore. I can right click on it and select free up space. This will turn off always keep on this device and it will remove it from my computer. So we'll give it a second, make sure it does its thing here. It'll refresh and now you'll see a little blue cloud icon. That means that if I open this file, it'll cache it real quick and then open, but it, it's not physically stored on my computer. I can only access this file if I'm connected to the internet because it's only stored in the cloud. So that's how you can manage files on your device if you need to always have it on your computer or if you want to take something off your computer. That should work either way. The last thing I wanted to go over is how to share files. So if you ever need to share a file with someone, and it's the same whether you do it here in OneDrive or if you do it in Teams, uh, it, it has pretty much the same exact options and, and box. So I'll just show you it from here. If I right click on it, I can click on share. It brings up this window. And this is the window that comes up basically no matter where you do the share option, if it's a file that's stored in OneDrive, Teams, SharePoint, it, you'll see the same window. So here right now it's defaulted to people I specify can view the file. But if I click on it, I have different options here. So the default option, and this may not necessarily be the default option for you, this can be different, but the default option for me is specific people, which means I can say, hey, send it to uh, let's send it to Olivier. There we go. Send it to Olivier. And so I'll send it to him. He'll get a link and he'll be able to view this file. If I wanted him to be able to edit it, I'd need to make sure that I allow editing here by marking that. Now, if you allow editing, you can't block downloading. So if you want to allow someone to view a file, but not download it, hit this and they won't be able to download the file to their local computer. Now there's other ways, like if it's a Word document, they can just like take a screenshot of it or something. It's not a perfect security thing, but it, it can help a little bit, especially if someone doesn't, it doesn't occur to them to do that. It just adds a little bit of an extra roadblock, uh, but it, it doesn't add a ton of security. So just be aware that it helps a little bit, but not completely. Uh, another option here is people with existing access. So if someone hadn't already had access to the demo team to general channel here, I could just use this option and send them the link and they'd be able to access it. You know, basically it's, it's telling them, hey, go to this folder, this team, 
this channel, this file section, instead of saying all that, you, you can just send them a link. And this, but this will only work, this option in particular will only work if they already have access. Otherwise, if you're sending it to a specific person who doesn't have access, you'd want to use specific people. People in your organization with the link is very similar to uh, people with existing access, um, except that this this will allow anyone that's signed into their their work Office 365 account, Microsoft 365 account, that are part of the organization, they will be able to access the the file. Even if they don't already have access, they'll be able to access it. Uh, so keep that in mind, and you have the same editing and block download options. The anyone with the link option is the least secure option, but it can also be the most convenient because there's no authentication involved, whereas if you send it with these other options, the person actually has to log in to their Microsoft account or the Microsoft account that you specify to be able to access that file. And that's for security reasons. It does make it much more secure. But not everyone has a Microsoft account. Um, sometimes people can be confused by that, which is when anyone with the link can be helpful. Now what this means is that anyone with the link, literally anyone with the link, can access this file. If this document had sensitive data in it, that's probably not a good idea. Like if there's, say, a social security number, credit card number, things like that, using anyone with a link is generally a not a great idea for that. Um, but you can do a couple things to increase the security even when you're using anyone with the link. For example, you can set it to not allow editing. Um, you can expire the file. So right now on, on my account, I have it set up to where the maximum time limit uh, for the expiration is seven days. So the max I can go out is just one week. Um, so that will expire the file. But let, let's, say, let's say it's a, you know, a sensitive document and I know that they're waiting for it and they're gonna access it right away. I, I can make sure that it expires tomorrow and you know, set a password on it to add a little bit of extra security and tell the person, hey, this is the password. One thing that I do want to stress though is if you set a password and you send it in the email with the link, it doesn't, it adds a little bit of extra security, but not much because if that person's mailbox gets hacked and someone gets access to their email, they'll have access to the link and the password. So I suggest that you do not share the link and the password together. You know, maybe email them the link and then, you know, call them with the password or, or teams them with the password or whatever, whatever method of communication makes the most sense in that situation, you can do that. For this example, I'm going to select specific people here and click apply. If I wanted to send it to Olivier, I can just start typing his name. And since he's part of the company, it recognizes him and just shows his name. It doesn't even show his email address or anything. So I can just click on his name. But if it was someone external to the company, someone who's not at Zetasky.com. So let's say I send it to, let, let me just make up something at blah, 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 dot com. Well, it doesn't know who this is, so it's just showing me the email address, and I can click that, and it's going to add it. And you'll notice, because it's not part of my organization, it's telling me this email address is outside your organization. This is there as a reminder saying, hey, you're saying to this someone that's not part of the company, just, just make sure that the, the data you're sending is allowed to be shared outside the company. It's, it's more just to remind you to double check that question in your head. Is this something you should be sharing with someone outside of your company? You can add a message here. It's optional. Uh, if, you're, if you're going to click the send button, which will have Microsoft send them an email, it will include this message. And so you may want to you know, explain why you're sending the message or, or you know, give them a heads up or whatever makes sense for that, that particular email. 
Um, but it does come from Microsoft, a Microsoft email address, not, not from your email address. If you want to say, share it over Teams, or uh, if you wanna craft your own email and send it from your email address, you can hit this copy link button. Now when you hit the copy link button, your, your message here doesn't really matter because it's not, it's not gonna send the email. So if I hit copy link, it's just gonna create a shareable link and then it automatically copies it to my clipboard. You can also make sure that it's copied by clicking on the copy button. You don't necessarily have to, but uh, it, it makes extra sure that you have it. And so if I were to say, send a message to somebody, you know, I can just paste it in there. Here's the link. If they click on it, if they have access, if I gave them access to it, they'd be able to access the file. So that's pretty much all the basics of OneDrive and, and how to sync files and share files. If you have any questions or issues, please let us know. Thank you.